Welcome to the Student Pilot Podcast. My name is Simon Callis, a flight school owner. Each week, myself and my guests will be talking all things flight training and beyond to help inspire, motivate and support you on your journey to becoming a private or commercial pilot. So welcome to the podcast, everybody. Welcome, Dave. Thank you very much. We have Dave from Coventry's ISO unit. And uh, for anybody who doesn't know what an ISO is, it's an airfield flight information service officer. Wow. Thanks. I had to write that down because, you know, it was it's a bit of a mouthful. Anyway, here at Not So Sunny Coventry now, it is dark. Welcome, Dave. So Dave used to be a radio DJ, funnily enough, back in a... In a former job. That was many so, years ago. I think, Dave, that you should introduce the podcast over some extremely dodgy sounding music. The Student Pilot Podcast with Simon Callis. There we go. Better than, better than late, <laughs> late Night Love with Simon Callis. <laughs> that's a different that's, subscription. That's a different episode and you have to pay for that one. So, Dave... We've got an interesting conversation to have because obviously you're a private pilot yourself, so yep. you've kind of seen things um, from both sides of the fence, if you like. Mm-hmm. So you've gone from newbie pilot talking on the radio, wondering what people think of your radio telephony, to sat in the tower going, wow, your radio telephony needs some work. <laughs> <laughs> not all the time. But not, yeah, all the, not all the time. So um, what advice would you give um, a student who's nervous about speaking on the radio? I think that's a question that I get asked a lot by a lot of different people. If they're nervous, what do you do? The fact is you've got to remember that the person who is on the other end of that frequency is there to help you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's as simple as that. Yeah. If you want something, if you need something, if you have a question, ask that's what, you know, the, the I in a FISO is for information. That's what we do. We provide yeah. that information. Um, air ground operators will provide, you know, guidance or, you know, they, they will give you the aerodrome information and ACOs are there to help make sure that your flight is safe. Yeah. That's what every single part of the air traffic network is there to do, to make sure people are safe, to make sure people are, you know, conducting the flight in a way that they want to. Yeah. That's fundamentally what it's there for. And I think really here at Coventry, obviously we used to be full air traffic and, mm-hmm. and had a radar service as well. Uh, you know, a FISO is a good kind of in-between because it's, yep. you know, really good information, good help if you need it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's not air ground, you know, like when we went to Siwa, that's air ground, um, you know, most of the time. And um, we're actually got a bit, you know, myself and Tom haven't been anywhere that was air ground mm-hmm. for such a while. We started up and we we're like, oh, so uh, <laughs> what do you want us to do? <laughs> you know? You've got your responsibility, haven't and you? They were like, well, just, yeah, taxi how you want, you know, it's up to you. Yeah, crack on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yeah, it's you get used to these different levels of service. You do, you do. Um, and I think here at Coventry, you know, not just because you sat in front of me, but the, the service is really good here. So it's, you know. Well, we do our best. Very helpful. Yeah, we do our best. So from your perspective, <laughs> um, coming from both sides have you kind of changed your outlook on it a little bit since you've done the job or i think for me it's it's garnered sympathy let's put it that way um when i'm up in the tower i need to remember that not everybody is as comfortable as i am on that end of the radio and equally i've got to remember that there are far more experienced pilots out there you know they they know exactly what they're doing they know exactly what they expect from me and it's about looking at every single one of those on a case by case basis. Yeah. And you will hear some people who are clearly nervous and you'll react in a different way. Yeah. Obviously you've got your consistencies that you always need to deliver, but you do you listen to those people and you think do they need a little bit of help? Do they need a little bit of leeway? But then you've got the other people who are really quite clearly, you know, asking stating yeah. things bish bash bosh all done, yeah. very efficient and you so, so you can tell. You yeah. can tell. I mean, I've, I've kind of noticed that on the radio is that if you've got a student who's making their first few radio calls, mm-hmm. you guys have a little bit more kind of um, patience, if you like, with those yeah. people to make sure that yeah. they, um, you know, they get what they need. And, you know, and, you know, first solos, for example, it's, you know, it's treated slightly different yeah. because of the, the circumstance. Yeah. You've got to remember that every, every single person needs to start somewhere. Yeah. And we recognize that. We also recognize 
especially at Coventry, it's a training aerodrome. Yeah. There are so many flight schools. There are so many visitors that come in who are doing their qualifying cross countries. They're doing their um, landaways as part of their training. Uh, we get people coming in in DA42s doing circuits because they're doing their MEIR. Yeah. And we get people doing their very, very first solo in a Cessna 152. Mm -hmm. We get the whole breadth. Yeah. And so we've got to acknowledge that. You know, we've got to remember that as predominantly training, we need to kind of give them that leeway. And I think for that fact alone, the fact it is a busy training airfield and you've got aircraft of different speeds and things in the mm -hmm. circuit, then that, you know, it takes a little bit more management from your guys to mm -hmm. make sure that everybody's communicating properly and it's yeah. done right, you know. Yeah. So tell us, um, what made you become an AFISA? What inspired you to do it? So many years ago, um, so my background's actually HR. Mm -hmm. and that's what I was qualified in, I was trained in, and that's all I was ever doing. Um, I was desperate to learn to fly, just mm -hmm. like a lot of people that you talk to every single day. They're desperate to fly, they want to do it, and it was something that actually my dad always wanted to do, never got around to doing it. Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to do it. I don't care. I'm going to do it. Throw some of the money at it, see what happens. Yeah. And I went around a few different schools, went around a few different airfields, and I came across Almat. Um, all those years ago, all those years ago, all those years ago. and, and I, I just loved it. So I, I learned to fly at Almat. Um, I did all of my training with Almat with a couple of different instructors, got on really, really well with everybody here. Mm -hmm. And just after I passed the aerodrome, for want of a better phrase, it closed, it closed down. Yeah. Um, there were a lot of different changes going on at Coventry at the time. And there was a lot of uncertainty yeah. and Coventry went air ground. And a little bit of a, an email went out from the aerodrome management saying, look, we've got no ATCOs. There are no ATCOs that would particularly want to do air ground at Coventry. Mm -hmm. Is anybody willing to volunteer or is anybody wanting to, to do it? So foolishly, I put my hand up because I thought, why not? You know, I can do a little bit of air ground on a Saturday or a Sunday. It's fine. I work nine to five, Monday to Friday. It'd be great. And it snowballed. Yeah. So I started off up there doing air ground. And then when it went fizz full time, um, I did my FISO exams. I don't know why it just happened yeah you know it, it just it was just one of those things where it, it, literally i was walking into is the building next door yeah. where i did my exams and i walked in there and i was like hold on why am i here i'm supposed to be working in hr <laughs> you know this, this 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 is this where i belong i don't know but i just went for it does anyone belong in hr oh, i've still like got very... colleagues that work there so i'm not going to say anything. <laughs> Sounds like a very thankless job. <laughs> oh, it was. It was. I enjoyed it, though, to be fair. Um, yeah, so I did my Pfizer exams, and then as time went on, I, I got the job, and I moved up there full-time. Um, and so now I'm one of the three full-time Pfizer's up there. Excellent. Um, so from a pilot's perspective, mm. what can they expect from a Pfizer service? Because people get confused about this. Yeah. So you've got your four services that you can have. Mm -hmm. You've got a basic service, traffic service, deconfliction, and procedural. Those are the four services that you'll get yeah. um, outside of controlled airspace, that is. What you can get from an AFISO is a basic service. Yeah. So basic service is there and it allows as much autonomy as you possibly can. Um, you can get it if you're IFR mm -hmm. in class G, so yeah. uncontrolled airspace, or you can get it if you're VFR in both class G and class E mm -hmm. airspace. So... What, the, what you will get under a basic service is anything that might impact on your flight. Yeah. So it might be weather, it might be airspace closures, it might be danger areas, it might be various no-tamped activities, uh, but you'll also get that alerting service as well. Yes. What you won't get is any form of formal traffic information. Yeah. We always do our best. If we know there's somebody there, you know, if we take the local airspace, if we know somebody's over Draycott Water at 2,000 feet, yeah. And you say, I'm approaching Drake or Water at 2,000 feet. I'm yeah. not going to sit there and just go, oh, that's a shame. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I am going to tell you that there is, inf you know, there's, there's traffic reported yeah. there. But it's very easy to confuse that with a traffic service. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So just because you get some traffic information doesn't form part of a traffic service. Yeah, absolutely. 
So then, you must have, well, I know you've experienced some emergency situations at some point. (laughs) Um, So can you tell us what is going on in the background from from the air traffic side um, during an emergency and what kind of assistance could you expect as a pilot during an emergency? Okay, so you can expect whatever is reasonable. Um, it depends where you are. There are so many different variables. If you, let's say for argument's sake, let's say worst case scenario, let's say engine failure, yeah. and you're, I don't know, out in the middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. If you can tell us where you are, or give us a general hint as to what direction you are, we are going to start all of that alerting service. We're going to contact d d We're going to contact the police. We're going to contact yeah. Fire Brigade, all of that sort of good stuff. Yeah. And we'll make sure that we can get as much information from you as and when you're able to provide um, it. You did actually help me once, Dave. I seem to remember. I'm good like um, that. You, you are. <laughs> so I set out um, on a 350 nautical mile flight to Carnarvon and, uh, Carnarvon rather, and Dunk as well, back to Coventry. Came back to Coventry and found that it was 200 metres of it. <laughs> and on the way up, I kind of uh, saw this problem occurring. <laughs> Called up early and you were on and you said, yeah, it's 200 metres uh, visibility here. Um, we've already spoken to these airfields. Um, where would you like to go? Yeah. So it was, it was, you know, kind of relieving for me. To... People were already anticipating the problem that I was just discovering and that you were in the background already working on it. The direction and the, the speed that this fog was moving in and the fact that it was close to kind of getting to uh, sunset, there is the pressure of time as well. Mm-hmm. No night rating, so it's <laughs> shit, I need to get on the ground quick. Uh, turned back to Oxford because that had the best capabilities for me at the time with, with night facilities and things there. Um, got down on the ground safely at Oxford and then called you guys up. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> But um, but it just proves that you know you guys are thinking ahead on the ground. You're yeah. you're kind of monitoring what's going on, and if we're not back when we said we were going to be or whatever, there's already things in place that uh, that are there to help us. Absolutely, and that's what we want to do. Yeah. We want to make sure that you are safe while you're flying. I'm perfectly safe up in my tower. You know, there's nothing's going to happen up there. So might get an angry pigeon or something. Comes, comes we have had a couple of bird strikes in the tower. <laughs> <laughs> they make a hell of a thump. Um, but no, that's what we're there to do. You know, we're there to make sure that everything is coordinated as far as we can to make sure that you are safe. And if yeah. you are going to be back late, that's fine. Let us know. I imagine at some points it's quite stressful up there. Yep. Um, I may be wrong, but I would imagine if a circuit's really busy, you've got traffic coming in, joining the circuit, that's probably the, the, the kind of busiest and most stressful time. Would that be correct or not? Or? Yeah, it, it depends on so many things. Um, there are so many different variables, whether... Um, the ability of the people in the aircraft, uh, your confidence yeah. um, up in the tower. You know, we obviously have good days and bad days as well. We try not to let it show, but it does happen. Yeah. When it is a very, very busy circuit, so we normally limit the circuit to four. Yeah. Um, and that's not because we're mean, I promise. It's, it's purely because it becomes very difficult to manage. And because at Coventry, we've got no overhead join. Yeah. So everybody's coming in on base or on final. Yeah. So there isn't as much time as well for the pilot to kind of consider where everybody is. So we need to give far more traffic information. And when you're throwing a lot of information in people's direction about who's downwind, who's base, who's final, who's four mile final, who's early downwind, who's late downwind. Yes. It gets very challenging very quickly. Well, you notice that as a pilot, you know, sometimes you're struggling to get a word in edgeways. You yeah. Know, so, it's, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so, really, I, I think, um, have you got any advice for people flying in the circuit with regards to their comms? I think the most important thing is to listen out to what's going on. It's building up that picture in your mind. Mm-hmm. Um, you hear exactly the same as everybody else. You will hear everybody else's calls. Yeah. So, if you hear somebody on final and you're downwind it's a good idea just to see if you can see them yeah you know see see if you can you know just kind of grab sight of them so you know where they are and that then helps with you with your piloting performance within the circuit as well to make sure that you're not going to cut anybody up making sure that you're keeping safe distances all that sort of stuff Mm. and that you don't end up in that situation where you're right up the tail of somebody else 
Yeah, and then they, 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 yeah, it happens. They yeah. need to vacate right at the end of the runway, and before you know it, you're having to go around for the third time. I followed, um, oddly enough, but it was actually a, a TB10, I think it was. They did a go around at Shobden, mm -hmm. and I had to enter slow flight to keep mm -hmm. distance from them. And they, they're quite a quick aircraft, so yeah. they, they must have really been calling around the circuit. But yeah, yeah. I was thinking, my word, you know. So you do get that where people are doing things that you're not anticipating, yeah. and you've got to make a decision. Ah, importance of communicating position in mm -hmm. the circuit and your intention. Yeah. So very important to let us know where you are, because we do not have radar. Um, FISOs are not licensed to use a radar. Yeah. I know we all know what ADSB Exchange, Flight Radar 24, all of that sort of stuff. They are all really, really good sites, but we do not use them yeah. uh, in, in any way professionally to give you any information about where you are or indeed to look at you and go nah you're not where you say you are you're lying <laughs> we, we don't use that there are plans afoot um, to have flight information displays which are called FIDs yeah um, some FISO units will be licensed to have them okay um, I believe Scottish information and London information already use them yeah uh, Barton up north near Manchester they utilize it as well but it isn't a radar it's there for situational awareness okay so if we see somebody charging towards controlled airspace then we would be able to say mm -hmm, just you know, keep an eye on that yeah and that's fine but we don't have any radar so when you say you're at Drake Hot Water or if you say you're over the Daventry VOR or you say you're eight miles to the north I'm going to believe you. That's that's true. And a lot of people do say different places to where they actually are. <laughs> yeah. And it's not, again, we know that it's training. You know, so we kind of take that on board. Um, I think a lot of it is people are generally quite often behind the aeroplane a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. And their, their last position they thought where they were is what they're yeah. reporting. They're now five miles ahead of that well that's the problem and, yeah, keep going forwards yeah, you know do, so yeah. so you've worked out you know you've done your lovely little plotting on your chart yeah. and, and you've tuned into your two vors and you've done your you know your, where the lines meet and all that sort of stuff and that's absolutely great but that was probably 10 minutes ago so it, yeah a accurate position reporting incredibly important um just so that we can tell you exactly what you need to know at that point in time yeah i think intentions as well because you you quite often have people saying, oh, you know, we're downwind runway two, three. Yeah. Okay, what are you doing? Touching and going or, yeah. or full stop? You yeah. know, it's, uh... And again, that helps us yeah. help you. Yeah. So if, yeah. if somebody ahead of you says, oh, you know, I'm on a touch and go, yeah. then that's fine because the timings are going to work in such a way that yeah. you being on final behind them isn't going to be too much of a problem because they're going to be going off again. Yeah. But it's that whole thing about potentially them needing to vacate the runway yeah. if they're on a full stop. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so any abnormal circuit situations that we should talk about, do you think? So like change of direction? Mm -hmm. or we mentioned something while we were just having a cup of tea earlier about people orbiting in the circuit, which yeah. shouldn't be done in a FISO environment. <laughs> so so we can't, we can, as I've said before, you know, we can't tell you what to do while you're flying. Yeah. Right the way... Up until the holding point, when you're on the ground, yeah, that's our domain. We can issue those instructions and all that sort of stuff, and, and you're expected to follow them. Yeah. As soon as you get up in the air, or well, natural fact, as soon as you pass the holding point, yeah, you're on your own. That's yeah. honestly the way that I think about it. Yeah. You know, you're on your own. You're up in the sky. You're the pilot. You're the one with the license. You go for it. You've got that autonomy. So, yes, sometimes we do see um, questionable behaviour in the circuit. Mm -hmm orbiting on final when it's very very low mm. now i'm not an instructor but there are risks yeah. about orbiting very very low very slow with your flaps in mm. at maybe 500 feet um, on final especially over built-up areas as we are yeah i mean generally in a in controlled environment anyway you shouldn't be doing that no. you know no. so. so that's one thing orbiting in the circuit mm -hmm. any of our students listening please do not orbit in the circuit <laughs> it is not permitted <laughs> and um what are the things change of direction that's, yeah that's reasonably common isn't it it is um coventry is lucky that we are predominantly on two three yeah um the runway here that's just the that's just the predominant wind um yeah and it's it's it, it, I would probably say about 80% of the time we're on 2-3. Yeah. 
when we do need to change over to zero five, we have a lot of considerations. Mm -hmm. um, we, as a Pfizer, will take into not just the wind. This is the thing that a lot of people forget. We take into consideration the whole sort of environment. Yeah. So if it's particularly sunny, as it is at the moment, we get really, really low sun, especially as it's setting. On two, three. On yeah. two, three. And it's yeah. horrendous. And I know it is. And so we will be considering, is it worth switching over to zero five? Yeah just so that you can have a little bit of a break when you're, when you're landing, when you're in that most critical stage. Yeah. If it's downwind, then you just kind of keep going forwards. But when you're landing, you don't want to have that glare in your eyes. Yeah. We do take into account, obviously, the wind. As an Pfizer, we can operate with up to a five-knot tailwind. Yeah. But that's us. Yeah. That's not the pilots. If a pilot says to us, I'm not happy to land with a five-knot tailwind, yeah. that's fine. And we will do our best to kind of accommodate that. We will give the traffic information. We will give all of that sort of good stuff to help you decide how you're going to manage it. Yeah. So we won't tell you, you need to 180 new home position, and mm -hmm. we won't do stuff like that. that. That's not what it is about. Yeah. So we will tell you, well, there's this person downwind or there's that person on final, and then it's kind of down yeah. to you to say, right, well, this is what I'm going to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's a really good point because I remember coming back on two, three a few times where you literally got one eye open, your tongue hanging out, can't see where you're going and you're yeah, thinking, yeah, yeah I'll, take, I'll take zero five, please. Yeah. So I think people need to remember that they can, uh, you know, they can say to you, I'd prefer to land on zero five yeah. if the conditions permit, yeah. you know, because it's... And we will always try and accommodate that. There may yeah. be a, uh, you know, a delay. If there's yeah. four in the circuit and everybody's on two, three. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to yeah. be honest, it's going to be very difficult for us to do that. And yeah. we will tell you. Yeah. Just let you know. Yeah. But if you want to leave the A to Z. Yeah, and come back. Which, and then come back. Yeah. That's absolutely fine. Uh, all we would say is just please don't go charging in on 05 if we're telling you about the traffic. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's the thing, isn't it? Building up that situational awareness. Mm -hmm. You know, if you've got lots of people saying, actually, I want to go on to 05, then yeah. you're probably best off leaving the A, you know, go out the A to Z, yeah. come back. Um, but yeah, just listen to what's happening around you is a key thing, isn't it? Absolutely. So then, just for a bit of fun. <laughs> what are your pet hates from an air traffic perspective? What is it that people say that drive you nuts? I've got one. Can I get it in first? Go on then. It's when people say finals. Oh my God, I was absolutely going to say that. <laughs> it's like, how many finals, how many runways do we have? We have one. There right? is one. It's, I, know, I think it's a military thing. I'm finals for 2-3. No, you're, you're final for 2-3. Yes. Yeah. It, that's it, thing. You're on final. That's yeah. it. It's singular. Yeah. It's it, not. It, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. If you're going to force me into saying this, Simon. Um, when we give the traffic, um, sorry, no, when we give taxi, yeah. and we'll say it's runway 23, yeah. left hand circuit, yeah. Q and H, da 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 da. Yeah. And people say runway 23 left. No, no, no. It's not, no. No, yeah. we do not have parallel runways. Yeah, yeah. We have one yeah. runway, it's 23 left hand circuit. 23 left yeah. is a runway designator that doesn't exist. Yeah. And I know it sounds really petty. But it grates on me every <laughs> single time I hear it. Just, just for anybody who doesn't understand what Dave's talking about, it's it's common at big airports that you can have two runways of the same heading, but a left one and a right one. Yep. So Heathrow is a good example yeah, of that. Heathrow, yeah, so, so you have two seven left and two seven right. Yeah, absolutely. If you say I'm on two seven left, they're going to expect you to be over that. Yeah. Well, we don't. So have you, that. you can actually have two planes landing simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Uh, parallel to each other but here at Coventry if they say left hand circuit that means that's the circuit direction yep. we haven't got two runways anything else anything else no I don't think so j j honestly honestly I, I obviously I thought about this earlier I don't think there is I I just try to be too nice do you know what got me was when they changed the phraseology from um you clear controlled airspace here is like remain outside and below, below. controlled airspace yeah, okay yeah. so there's yeah. a story to this yeah go on. because of where coventry sits we are right underneath birmingham's controlled mm -hmm. airspace and it's a standard phrase that is in cap 413 everybody's favorite cap and it is it, it you know it's kind of abbreviated to rocas remain outside controlled airspace okay mm -hmm. fine um because we've got this lid on us of mm. Birmingham's controlled airspace, quite often we used to get people just ploughing up to sort of like 2,000 feet, and yeah. then we get an angry phone call from Birmingham. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. and Now, I used to work at Birmingham, and, and they are great guys and girls, they really are, but yeah. please don't bust their airspace. They, yeah. they look after that very well. So when somebody goes popping up randomly into it, it, it kind of causes all sorts of chaos. So it was actually the old manager of air traffic services who came up with the phrase of, 
remain outside and below controlled airspace. Well. Yeah. But if you look at like Wellsbourne, for yeah. argument's sake, so Wellsbourne doesn't have controlled airspace on top of them as low as we do, but they've yeah. got a lot of noise sensitive areas. Yeah. If you line up on runway 36... So have we now. We have now, yeah. <laughs> but if, if you line up on runway 36, just as you're going on to the runway at Wellsbourne, yeah. it will say for noise abatement, there's a sign right yeah. next to the holding point. It says for noise abatement, turn right, heading 030. Yeah. So that's not considered an instruction from an advisor. It's from the Aerodrome Authority. Mm. Ah. And we can issue instructions on behalf of the Aerodrome Authority. Yeah. So that's why we kind of came up with this somewhat unique phraseology. To be honest, the only reason I didn't like saying it is because it's more of a mouthful than the original one. And I've got to remember it. <laughs> <laughs> You've only got to parrot back what we're I, saying. <laughs> I know. But, you know, I've, I've took a couple of breaths since you said it. I might have forgotten it. <laughs> forgotten what's been going on. The fact that uh, as, long as, you, as long as somebody reads back that they're kind of aware of the controlled airspace, that's Absolutely. what I'm really bothered about. Yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, so we, that's your pet hate. Mm -hmm. uh, I've given one of mine. And um, so conversely then, because mm. we want a bit of uh, controversy as well, um, you as a pilot, what are your yeah. air traffic hates? What uh. drives you nuts as a pilot? Okay, it's happened to me a few times. It's when FISOs or controllers yeah. forget about you. That happens all the time. I know. <laughs> and it annoys me so much. I remember I was doing my, I was doing my qualifying cross country. Yeah. And I was going from Gloucester to Connington. Mm -hmm. And I won't say who I was talking to because that would be completely unfair. And I made my good call with my best RT English. <laughs> and they said, uh, what was I in? I was in the grob. And they said, stand by. So I was like, and I know not to read back standby. Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, a couple of moments went past and it kind of went quiet. And I was like, okay, well, maybe, maybe they're just having a bit of an off day, you know. So I, I just called again. And they were like, oh, yeah, no, 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 sorry. Uh, yeah, just, just stand by, stand by. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. And then in the end, I thought, I've got to leave frequency because I'm so far away from them. Whatever information you can provide me is completely useless now. And I just said, oh, I'm having to leave frequency now. And all I got was, Roger. <laughs> and they were so blunt about it. And I was like, don't be mean to me. You're the one that forgot me. So, yeah, that annoys me. Yeah. People forgetting about pilots. Is, is, <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to lie. I, I may have forgotten about you once on one of the holding points on the other side of the uh, runway. That wasn't that wasn't you actually. That was. That was it not? No, oh, that was that was PB. And, oh, was it? Um, anyway, I know the story <laughs> because it was. I managed to watch one of our students do about three circuits, and it was boiling and I'm, I'm sat there sweating like a pig door jacked open with the engine running in the end and i was like golf mike sierra still holding the echo it's a bit and then awkward I, then I got the i can imagine golf mike sierra it happens it happens we, we, obviously up in the tower we can kind of see everything yeah, yeah so yeah. quite yeah. often quite often i'll be looking at somebody holding at charlie or echo and i'm kind of thinking to myself I hope they don't hate me. <laughs> you were sat there looking at me, nudging him, going, yeah, leave that back for me. It's fine, leave him there, he'll be fine. He's got the door open, how about he's f***ing roasting? <laughs> Are you trying to tell me that that doesn't have air conditioning? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a big propeller on the front that I kind of like to keep spinning. It's a fan, it's fun. It's a fan. It'll yeah, keep it you cool. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, generally being held on the ground drives me nuts, but I get it, it happens sometimes. Yeah, it, it's, it's, and again, actually, if we talk about understanding who people are, what they are, if you've got a solo student, there is no point in trying to nip them out in front of somebody no, else. No, There's no, no point in getting them to no. quickly backtrack because it just won't work. And no. it, it adds to that pressure. If I know, you know, you know, if it's one of your instructors and they know that it's busy yeah. and I know that they're going to be able to nip off quite quickly. And you do, you start to understand not, you're not just talking to aircraft, you're talking to the individual people and you yeah. start to learn what they're like, what their traits are, how much you can sort of expect them to do bits and pieces. And that's really helpful as well. Yeah, absolutely. So then, when are you coming flying next, David? Oh, it's a good question. Um, I don't know. I know it needs to be soon because my SCP rating is <laughs> <laughs> taking its last breath. How easy is it to let that lapse out? It's, it's too just, easy. It's too easy. Especially in the recent times. 
you know, I think so. coming out of COVID, yeah. um, obviously we're all feeling the pinch financially. Absolutely. Yeah. And we look at things like that and we think to ourselves, is it, is it worth it? You know, is it worth keeping that going? How often do I really get to fly? And I was talking to my other half about this and they said, you know what? It, it doesn't really matter how much it costs. Just do it. If you can do it, yeah. do it. Because it's good for another two years then. But it's, I think, you know, I suffer the same. Yeah. It's like, you know, it, it costs a lot of money. Even for me, it costs a lot of money. Um, and you work in this environment. Yeah. And all you see is people flying around all day. And you're thinking, yeah. well, I'm stuck in it. You've got a better view than I have out your office. Have. But, you know, all I've got is Glynn and the reception desk. But, you know, it's... <laughs> <laughs> but no, you've got a great view out your office window yeah. in the tower. But yeah. nevertheless, it doesn't make it any easier when you're seeing all these people having fun and you're no. in the office. <laughs> it doesn't. And you do. You see it. And of course, for me, I'm only available when the airport isn't open. Absolutely. Yeah, that's true. So when I need, to do, when I need to do circuits... I can't do circuits. Yeah, true. Because we can't do circuits when we're closed. Um, but what I found really good is certainly yourself and Steve yeah. have been able to sit down and come up with a plan. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what's really nice about it is, you know, you come up with our plan, right, we're going to do a couple of hours of general handling. You go and do your LPC with Steve and he'll be able to sort you out. And you get that plan. It's nice and easy and straightforward. Yeah. And that's what I'm going to be doing. Yeah, absolutely. But that's the thing. It's a... It's a community isn't it? everyone wants you mm. to fly everyone wants yeah. to fly you know you've got yeah. to help each other out so when you've got that shared interest absolutely that's yeah. what helps so i reckon you know we're doing the aviator show which is just, mm -hmm. just plugging it now because it's not launched yet but we're doing a show where we actually go and fly rather than just talking in the classroom yeah <laughs> um, but you should come on the aviator show i'd love we'll to do a trip we'll i'd do love a trip. to it'll be great <laughs> that'd be great Anyway, Dave, thank you very much for coming on the podcast. It's been a pleasure having you as, as always. Thank you very much. And uh, don't forget to uh, smash the like button and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next episode. If you like this episode, please like, subscribe, and ding the bell to receive notifications of the next episode.